Pack up your good things, pack them up well. Make them into triangles and rectangles and balls. Grab all the handles that you can bear. The handles are bridges into the world. The world is a bridge into your heart. So we are on the bridge now, and um, where are we sailing to? Well, remember, in those days there were no, there was no GPS, no, uh, no possibility to have any feeling where we are. But the sextant, where people were measuring the height between the, the sun, where the sun was standing, and the and the equator. And uh, then you could uh, uh, calculate exactly where on the ocean you were, and they made a small cross on the on the on the map. That was here, a sea map. And then the uh, the mate was uh, calculating and deciding which direction I'll be going. And the uh, and the guy uh, governing the uh, steering wheel was standing on the full speed ahead with the. Uh, with the starboard engine, we put it here, and uh, people hear a noise. Oh, a bell ring, and they see a, a little in a lamp shining here, and they understand that they should go faster. Oh, where are your stockings and where are your boots? I'm gonna climb high now. Watch for your scars. They're gonna fly away from your neck. They were used for all well, uh, public activities. So actually, they did. Uh, they started at 10 o'clock in the morning with the uh, uh, morning gym. The piano player did that, and uh, they played until some four o'clock in the morning with the uh, nightclub that was upstairs. But this was the original, this was actually the, the room that you're in now, was the most popular room on the ship because this was always full of people. And uh, if you look around, you try to think that this was full of people because that it's so different from what you see now. Yeah. Once I had, uh, but I didn't know it was a tsunami, okay. a tsunami wave, and uh, the biggest problems that we had was that a lot of passengers were falling on the floor, and also I think some other people also fell on the floor. But uh, the practical problem was that all uh, plates in the kitchen, because they were not fastened, they were broken, and we did not have any plate anymore. So we stayed in. Casablanca, it was another two days because the planes had to be flown in from uh, from Holland. <laughs> yeah. When it was nice weather, the very front was covered with uh, with people that were sitting in the sunshine because it was the only part of the ship that we, as people that were working on board, were able to sit outside in the sun. So that was our domain for nice weather. I was uh, I was uh, serving as a steward in the club room. The club room was something similar like the smoking room, and then for the uh, tourist class passengers. And actually, I I started because I was almost to go into the military service after school, and I thought well, it would be nice to have one trip on on that ship. So um, I signed for one contract of uh, three weeks. And after three weeks they said, well, it was uh, going very nice, would you, would you like to stay? And I said, no, I said, quit now. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a sailor type. So then they, they sold this to me because the next trip was doing also a, a tour around the world, three months. And uh, then I said, okay, I'm sorry, once more. I, I stayed seven years, <laughs> which was very nice, but also crazy long. So with this ship I went uh, six times around the world.